Hey Windowers, and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows 98. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Windows codename Nashville Build 999, an alpha build compiled on the 28th of November 1995, of a cancelled version of Windows that was initially intended to be released after Windows 95. However, just like Windows codename Neptune a few years later, Nashville would be scrapped and replaced with a new project, Windows codename Memphis, or what we now know as Windows 98. While not technically part of the development process of Windows 98, the timing of Nashville's inception means that it contains the seeds of many features that would eventually end up in Windows 98, including an internet integrated shell, new menu animations and an internet mail and news program. So, with that said, let's take a look and let's start. So here we are at the desktop of Windows Codename Nashville and firstly I just want to mention that hopefully you've seen this in the first part of the video but the setup process and boot screen for Windows Codename Nashville are both pretty much identical to those of Windows 95. The only real difference is in the setup process where there's an extra optional component that you can install known as Microsoft Athena which I'll talk a little bit more about later on in the video. Now, the operating system refers to itself as both Windows 95 and also by a couple of other names. So if you go to the normal system properties dialog box, you'll see that it calls itself Microsoft Windows 95, as you'd expect. However, if we then have a look in control panel, if we go to add remove programs, you'll see listed here Windows 96. So the operating system actually lists itself in the add remove programs dialog box. and the fact that this is uh, listed as Windows 96 means that this wasn't just a name that the press um, or public were using to refer to this version of Windows, it was actually a name that Microsoft were obviously considering as the final name of the release. Um, now if you try to remove Windows 96 from this menu, you just get this dialog box which just tells you that if you remove it, you will just be restoring your previous build. And the last place where we have a third name for the operating system is in the command prompt. So if we go here, you'll see that it calls itself Microsoft Nashville in this section. Now, Microsoft claimed that Nashville would add internet integration features into the Windows shell, much the same as the changes that eventually came in what was known as the Windows desktop update from Windows 95, as well as obviously Windows 98. So this included features such as a combined file manager and web browser. So if we go back into my computer here, and by default this is off, but if we go to view and click on toolbar, this will turn on a toolbar at the top of the File Explorer window. Now this toolbar is available in Windows 95, the only difference here is that we have these back and forward navigation buttons as well as this favourites button. So these work as you probably expect, so if I go to the C drive for example here, let's turn this back on, oh I'll tell you what I've forgotten, we need to actually change a setting for this to work don't we? We need to have these windows opening in the same folder, so let's try that again, so if you go here and program files we can now use these navigation buttons to go back and forth between the different folders and the favorites menu would work exactly as you'd expect so if i want to bookmark the c drive as a favorites i can click add to favorites and then it will be in this list so if i go to a different folder and come back to c you can use it as a favorites list so obviously these two features have come from internet explorer so another part of this shell integration is the ability to search or navigate to a website from the file explorer address bar again the same as what became possible to do in windows 98 now this virtual machine doesn't have an internet connection but i can show you how this was meant to work so if we try and go to google this would bring up the google page unless you don't have an internet connection in which case you get this error message unable to find it the address may be incorrect now if I do that again without clicking away from it, have a look at what happens to the toolbar buttons. So you can see what's actually happened here is the shell has switched to Internet Explorer and it's done that kind of in the background without you having to go to Internet Explorer yourself and click on the icon yourself. So you can see here we've got a home button, we've got a search button, we've got stop and refresh buttons, we've got the print button and so on. So again this is what happens in Windows 98 if you type in a web address from File Explorer it will switch 
to Internet Explorer. And you can do the same thing backwards. So if you start in Internet Explorer and type in, for example, the location of your C drive, you can switch back to your hard disk and the toolbars will go back to the normal File Explorer toolbars. Now, two smaller changes that are present in the Windows shell in this build of Nashville are a sliding menu animation that would later find its way into Windows 98 and a highlight effect on window control buttons that was not found in the final release of Windows 98 but did make its way into some of the early builds of 98. Now for more information on this, have a look at the next video in this series which I actually recorded before this one. So do try to ignore my apparent surprise at seeing this feature again in that video but that's why. <laughs> and also thank you to um, one of my subscribers called MS Gill who actually notified me on that video that this feature actually did first appear in this build of Nashville. Now the only other main feature included in Nashville is what's called Athena PIM. Now this program eventually became Microsoft Internet Mail and News and was released in 1996 as part of Internet Explorer 3. That itself eventually became Outlook Express in Windows 98 so this is a very early version of what was to become Outlook Express. You can see the premise is similar to what you have with Outlook Express. So you have the ability to um, make appointments on a calendar, for example, to be able to respond to emails and have a task list that you can obviously add to and do what you want with. So let's have a look through these sections here. So we've got contacts, first of all. So here we've got a basic address book that you can use. Obviously you can type in the name of a contact, but it just says not yet implemented for that one. And then hopefully you've noticed when you actually go to one of these sections, the interface changes and now you have this sidebar where you can quickly switch between all the other sections. Now I'm not entirely sure what white pages is. This could be, I don't know, is this an American thing? It could be analogous to yellow pages in the UK. I'm not sure, like a kind of directory of businesses and stuff. I'm not really sure. Um, then obviously we've got calendar, which as you'd expect acts like a calendar. So you can choose a date and time here. You can double click and enter whatever you have going on so we'll put an appointment there and then we have messages so this is the email section so you can see we've got a drop down here where we can choose the folder so deleted items inbox outbox sent items we've got this welcome message here much the same as you get with Outlook Express when you first boot it up you can see we've got all our normal email functions so you've got new message new contact etc this is what the new message UI looks like so as you can see it's all kind of similar to Outlook Express but slightly different. I quite like this actually, it's kind of like a postcard kind of look up here with a little stamp and stuff, that's quite nice. Window stamp, oh now come on. I need this, I need this actual object. That's brilliant. Okay, and then lastly we have a task list, so this works as you'd expect. Um, the modern equivalent of this would probably be Microsoft To Do, so um, buy milk. Perfect, and then obviously you can tick them off here to show when you've done them. You can also switch to just your active tasks and just your completed tasks. So that's that one. So let's see if we've got anything else in the menus. So you can quickly add new messages, contacts, appointments and tasks from the file menu. You can search for stuff here and again you can specify whether you're looking for a task or contact. Let's see, does it work? Yes, it does. Excellent. Then we've got view so you can turn on that toolbar that I was talking about earlier with the back and forward buttons and the favorites list so it's quite customizable really and then if you go to options you'll notice that this just takes you back to the default folder options as part of file explorer so everything's very integrated and that was the main premise really of windows 98 it was to integrate all of these new internet functions into the windows shell um, now another interesting function here which again was present in 98 is this one so if you turn on single click to activate that now means that when you hover over an icon and click once it will launch that icon that program that directory with a single click now you may have noticed already in nashville that certain defaults are different to what they were in 95 and indeed 98 so by default even without that single click setting activated when you move your mouse over an icon it automatically selects itself and all of the icon names act like hyperlinks so they have an underline and they come up in blue when you put your mouse over them so again this is more of that internet integration feature that's coming into the shell
And really, those are the only changes that are present in Nashville compared to Windows 95. So I hope you've enjoyed this quite short episode, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I will see you then. Thank you.